Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at returning values from functions. So I copied the um, project from the last tutorial and then just pasted it into the um, into the uh, project view, Pro project explorer here, to create this copy, which is here. Um, and uh, now this process selection, which we have from the last tutorial, is actually doing two tasks here, or at least two tasks. Uh, it's getting input from the user, and then it's processing that input. What we'd like to do is create a dedicated function that just gets input from the user. Let's take out this stuff that's actually processing the input here. Let's cut it and put it back in the main function for the moment, and I'll just format that. Now the problem here is that we've declared input, which is the variable we use to get the user input, in process selection, and variables are scoped to the enclosing pair of curly brackets. So this variable, uh, the scope of it is these curly brackets, and that means that it only exists between those curly brackets. So we can't then use it down here, which is why I've got an error here. Uh, so to deal with that, um, we need to make this function return a value into the calling function, which is main here. So we want to get a value from this, and we want to be able to use it in this. Uh, so to do that, um, what we do is, firstly, uh, this void here, this is what we call the return type of process selection, the return type of the function. And I want this function to return an integer. So I'm going to change void. Void means no return type. And I'm going to change that to int because we want to return an integer. Then at the end of the function here, I'm going to type return input. And um, that is enough to say, to actually make this function return a integer. So here we're, we're saying that it returns an integer. And here we're specifying what integer we actually return. It's this one, it's input. Now to get input in the main uh, function here, we can declare a variable, let's call it input again, and set it equal to process selection. So this looks like we're setting an integer equal to a function, which is mind boggling. But what's actually happening is that we're setting input equal to whatever process selection returns. And that's gonna be this variable here. So this variable and this one are completely different variables. They're completely separate. This one exists between these brackets. This one exists between these brackets. And in fact, uh, that they're not connected in any way either. Uh, what's happening is that we're returning the value of input here and we're storing it in a completely new variable here. So we're, we're creating a copy of the value by doing this. And this does not, not need to be named input. We could call it something else. Let's call it selection. And we need to call this selection as well where we actually use it. Uh, so they're not connected. It's just that this value is being um, stored ultimately in here. And if I, if I were to change this, it's not going to alter this. This code is completely self-contained now. Uh, the only thing, it, the only interaction it has with other functions is that it's returning a value here, which is copied into this variable. So that, that should behave um, exactly the same as before. Let's run it. And let's enter a selection. Let's say um, three for quit. And it says quitting. So it executes case three. So like a lot of things in C++, this looks quite um, impenetrable until you actually try it. The important thing is don't stress too much over what's happening, but actually try to get it working. Try to type out code and get it working. I'd suggest as an exercise that you do what I've just done and uh, take the tutorial from the last, um, take the code from the last tutorial and modify it to add this new function that just gets the user input. Or alternatively, take um, uh, any program you've written and just create some function that returns input. And you can have multiple ones in your program if you like, get multiple input from different functions. It's not a problem. So um, at the moment, we, we, yeah, we, we could return uh, doubles or uh, floats or even strings 
and ints, of course, but we can't return arrays. There's no way of doing that at the moment. So, um, so don't try that. But everything else you can return from a function. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, it's, as I say, it's important to practice this rather than kind of stress about how it works because once you've typed it a few times, then your understanding will come after once you can get it working, especially when you can get it working without referring back to, um, to example code like this. Okay, so in the next tutorial, we're going to look at passing values to functions. So until next time, happy coding.